I grew up somewhere over that horizon line, where the Canadian boreal forest meets the prairies. With gravel roads further than I could walk, I dreamed of working in big cities like New York, Milan, Shanghai, Athens, Moscow, and faraway countries like Hong Kong and Kazakhstan and other places I couldn't even pronounce. I dreamed of being a photographer. Or maybe an art director, producer, or even a creative director. Working with supermodels in New York City studios. flying around the world, understanding business and manufacturing in places like China, building relationships and understanding different cultures, staying at five-star hotels and eating at expensive restaurants. I dreamed of having my work published in the world's top fashion magazines. Wouldn't that be amazing? That would be living the dream. Well, I achieved it, all of it. Did it feel as good as I was expecting? Yeah, for a little bit. But a voice inside me was telling me this wasn't the life I was supposed to live. I was producing content for one type of lifestyle, but then coming home and living a completely different one. Something didn't feel right about that to me. It took a lot of chopping wood to realize I needed to walk away completely to figure this one out. I needed to clear my mind. If I still wanted to continue my career and truly enjoy the years to come, I needed to be clear on the lifestyle I wanted to share with the world, but I wasn't completely sure what that was. So now what? I've got no income, and I'm confused with what to do with my life. Where do I start? What do I believe in? I guess I can thank Henry David Thoreau, who said, everyone must believe in something. I believe I'll go canoeing. And so, we went canoeing. And then we canoed a little more, and went further and further on multiple trips. More canoeing, more portaging. We even made new friends and went canoeing with them. And then more canoeing and more portaging until I learnt my first important lesson. The more you own, the more things you have to pack. The more things you have to carry with you. The more, the more, the more. The more I had, the more stressful life seemed to become. So I simplified my life and realized that lesson number one on my journey was understanding the beauty in simplicity. When we got back home, I would build something and I'd do it simply. Less stuff also means less tools.
I'd use what I had and let creativity fill the gaps of what I didn't. When it was finished, I would admire it, and I'd feel proud of my work. I realized I'm more proud of the things I make than the things I buy. So that became lesson number two. Creativity. I still love cameras, always have, always will. So I take pictures and make films of the things that bring me joy, and I share them on Instagram and YouTube. The support from the community feels wonderful, and it reminds me of the lesson that Christopher McCandless died to teach the rest of us. Happiness is only real if shared. And that formed the basis of lesson number three, community. So, as for who is Trust in Timber, he is the voice in my heart that reminds me. Trust in simplicity, trust in creativity, trust in community. And when all else fails, trust in Timber and go build something. I want to welcome you on the Trust in Timber journey. I don't know where I'm headed, but I decided I'll post weekly videos so you can come along if you wish. Until next week. Be nice to others and be nice to our earth.